Hello and welcome to this short with me and mine presentation based on low mood. This video is aimed at young people who may be suffering with low mood or may want to learn more information about it. Today we'll cover what low mood is and how it is caused, what symptoms you may experience if suffering with low mood and top tips for managing low mood. So what is low mood? Low mood is when you constantly feel down or sad about life. It affects how we feel, what we think, how we behave and what we physically feel inside our bodies. It affects our ability to do everyday things and reduces the amount of pleasure we get out of life. There are many factors which may contribute towards somebody suffering with low mood. Everyone is different and there's no specific cause. Some people may find that the reason or trigger is obvious, but sometimes it might not always seem clear. It could be a distressing event or a major life change, such as somebody you care about passing away, a change of school or a relationship breakdown. It could also be the pressures of school, exams or, or bullying, for example. It's normal to feel sad, upset or low from time to time. We all experience this, especially during some situations, just as previously mentioned. It's part of life and doesn't necessarily mean that something is wrong. However, some people are affected by this more than others, and it is when it doesn't disappear, becomes frequent and all-consuming, that this may become a problem that ought to be shared with a trusted adult. So what are the symptoms of low mood? So some of the symptoms that you may experience if you've been suffering with low mood are, um, the first one, you may have lost interest in things that you used to enjoy. For example, you may used to have loved drawing or photography, but no longer spend any time doing this. You may have attended an after-school club every week, but gradually stopped going due to feeling so low. It may also be that you get less enjoyment out of some of the activities that you do still do too and find that they're no longer as fun. You may find that you often don't want to be around people and avoid social situations by isolating yourself in your bedroom rather than going out with friends or spending time with family in the home, for example. You may feel lonely despite having people around you who care. You might be sleeping more or less than normal or feel tired and not have any energy or motivation. You may find that you're having difficulties concentrating and can't seem to get on with your schoolwork. Equally, you may find that you spend a lot of time procrastinating. You may feel irritable, upset, sad or miserable. You could feel hopeless, worthless or guilty. You may find yourself being self-critical and only seeing the bad in anything that you do. Your appetite might, may have changed and you may find yourself eating more or less than usual. This could change from day to day. You may also have found that as a result of this, you've lost or gained weight. People experiencing low mood may also self-harm or get thoughts of wanting to self-harm. They may feel suicidal and think that their life is not worth living. Lots of people experience low mood without having these thoughts. However, if this is something that you're experiencing, please do talk to a trusted adult about how you're feeling. It's really important to point out that although I have listed some common symptoms of low mood here, no one person experiencing low mood will experience it the same. For example, Max may isolate himself in his bedroom, sleep all of the time and have no motivation to do anything, not even motivation to eat. He may feel irritable and have a sense of hopelessness. Mia may want to be around those who are uh, close to her all of the time, for example, her mum. She may not be um, sleeping properly and find herself awake for hours. She may have found that she's eaten more than usual and has put on weight and may feel really sad and upset all of the time. Both Max and Mia are suffering with low mood, but the way that they are experiencing this is extremely different. So top tips for managing low mood. Make sure you maintain a routine and plan things into your day. Try and keep your days as structured as possible by getting up at the same time each day, factoring in meal times and slots in the day to do your schoolwork with adequate breaks. Also make sure that you're factoring in time for yourself to do things that you enjoy or find relaxing. Examples may include taking a bath, doing some exercise, reading or spending time with someone you care about. Try to start winding down for bed approximately an hour before you plan to go to sleep. Distract yourself when you are struggling. When you are really struggling with your low mood, make sure that you have various things that you can do uh, which you enjoy to take your mind off things and do this as soon as possible to lift your mood. You could watch your favourite film, listen to music, play a game or talk to a family member for example. 
Make sure that you are getting the right amount of sleep, um, which is anywhere between eight and 10 hours, and that you have a healthy nighttime routine. So getting the right amount of sleep is so important for our mental health. Not getting enough sleep can cause poor concentration and memory, which can be difficult when trying to get on with your schoolwork, for example. It also affects our energy and motivation levels and can make us feel really irritable. Similarly, it is important to point out that getting too much sleep can have similar effects and can lead to difficulties waking up and getting on with our day. Um, On average, most teenagers need between 8 to 10 hours sleep. However, this is different for everyone. What's important is that you um, work out how much sleep you need to wake up feeling refreshed and not too tired during the day and make sure that you get this amount of sleep every night. Also ensure that you go to bed and get up at the same time each day. Eat a healthy, balanced diet. There are loads of benefits to eating well. If your blood sugar drops, um, you might feel tired, irritable and low. Therefore, improving your diet may help to improve your mood, give you more energy and help you think more clearly. So aim to have a balanced diet that includes all of the main food groups. Stay hydrated and avoid caffeine. If you don't drink enough fluid, you may find it difficult to concentrate or think clearly. So stay hydrated. Also try and avoid caffeine, especially after 6pm, as this can lead to difficulties getting to sleep. Do some exercise. Exercise releases chemicals in your brain called endorphins, which lift your mood. It can help you sleep better, have more energy and keep your heart healthy. It can also be a distraction from how low you may be feeling and will help you to feel more positive. Initially, it can be really hard to build the motivation to do exercise if you're suffering from low mood. So try to choose an exercise that you enjoy, whether that be football, dancing or maybe Zumba. If it helps, do it with a friend or listen to music. You could even do something less intense like yoga or speed walking until you build up your confidence and start to see the huge benefits of taking up exercise. Talk to somebody you trust about how you are feeling. Communication is so important, whether it's with a friend, a family member or school staff. Talking things through helps you release tension rather than keeping it bottled up inside. Also, somebody you trust may be able to give you a different perspective or share their experience and support you. Maybe a family member has also suffered from low mood and can help with some advice. Talking it out can also help to strengthen your relationships and connect with people. Set some clear, achievable goals. Low mood can get worse as you feel more hopeless about your situation. If you feel like there is no direction or purpose in your life, you'll feel unhappy and dissatisfied. Having a sense of hope about your future comes from having clear goals, which will make you feel more positive. In order to make meaningful goals, which seem within reach, it's a good idea to break these down into smaller, more achievable steps. This will also help you to feel more motivated to work towards each step, knowing that you can and will achieve it. Have a think about what you would like to change in your life to feel happier. What challenges or problems do you need to overcome? What would be a sign that your mood has improved? It could be that you may have rejoined the sports team that you left or that you are seeing friends twice a week. This could be broken down into FaceTiming your friends first and then meeting up with your friends once a week for an hour, which you could gradually extend. Then you could finally work towards your ultimate goal of meeting friends twice per week. Make sure that you don't set too many goals at once, however, as this can become overwhelming and reduce your motivation. So stick to between two and three goals at once maximum. Keep a progress journal. Another idea is keeping a progress journal. Writing about the pain that low mood is causing you can feel helpful, but as long as you don't focus on this too much. So instead, you could keep a journal to track your progress. You could log your emotions and behaviours, including any challenges you may have faced, and then rate your mood out of 10 for the day. Think about what achievements you have made that day, no matter how small, and acknowledge this success writing in your journal. It could be that you have managed to complete some schoolwork, or cook tea despite the way that you might have been feeling. Consider how this made you feel afterwards. Did it lift your mood slightly or did you feel more positive or you may have felt really proud of your achievement? Take action and make yourself do something. Doing nothing or procrastinating increases your sense of hopelessness and unhappiness, therefore worsening your low mood. So take action and push yourself to do something as soon as possible, even if you feel like all you want to do is lie in bed you'll find that you'll feel better in the long run and in a more positive frame of mind. 
Think about situations as though you were helping a friend. For example, you may think, I feel hopeless and no one would listen. Usually we don't speak to ourselves as kindly as we would others, which can be really damaging. So imagine if your friend said this, what do you think you would tell them? You may say something back like, it's okay to feel rubbish sometimes and there are people who care about you who would happily listen to your problems. If you are concerned about your mental health, then please speak to a trusted adult or school staff member who can help you. If you need urgent help for your low mood and feel that you can't speak to a trusted adult, then you can contact Childline or CAMS. The details for these organisations can be found on your screen now. If you would like any more information about our service and what we offer, you can visit our website, which is on your screen now. You can also find loads of really helpful resources, as well as videos that we've created, which provide information about mental health and ideas of how you can stay emotionally healthy. We are also available on social media, so follow our Twitter, Instagram and Facebook for updates on what we have been up to, as well as useful wellbeing posts. Thank you so much for watching this video based on low mood. I hope that you found it helpful.